Francisco. My name is Trina. I'm a medical cannabis patient. I partake of cannabis on a regular basis for PTSD, arthritis in both my knees and ankles, social anxiety, and a few other conditions you can learn more about through watching the previous shows on this channel. This is the Productive Cannabis Connoisseur, connoisseur. <laughs> a channel dedicated to medical cannabis patients and adults 18 and older. Sorry, I'm just waking up. I know it's it's already past one and I'm still waking up. <laughs> I'm still getting over that cold and flu. But today what I wanted to do is answer a, a viewer subscriber's question. I can't remember your name, but you know who you are. Um, asking me about what, what did I think about gang stalking. Um, so I looked up a little ar an article online. I didn't uh, write down the whole article, but I just put down the basics of what gang stalking is. Um, and what I'm going to do is share with you that and also my experience with gang stalking when I was young, when I was only five. So, and it was before I even knew what that term meant. So let's get settled in. It's a serious topic. Um, I mean, it's something that, um, yeah, I'll share my opinions about it after I roll a joint. So let me go get my stuff to roll a joint and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So I got the stuff to roll me joint. And let's do this. I hope you guys had a safe and uh, nice holiday. Some people celebrate dank Thanksgiving. Some people call it Danksgiving. <laughs> if you medicated your turkey, it definitely was Danksgiving then. <laughs> so let's go and roll a joint. I'm not going to use uh, the clears. I'm going to use the raw, the raw papers. The raw papers are easier for me to roll with. So that's why I'm using those. <clears throat> I hope you guys are having an okay day today. Today for me is Sunday and it's raining. It's just going to be raining all day. So I figured it would be a good time to do this video. So I'm using some sugar shake that I got from my local medical cannabis delivery service. Um, even the leaf is strong in this. That's what's crazy about it. Um, I, if you're wondering why I use Sugar Shake all the time, it's because I can't afford to buy a bunch of nugs and grind them up. That's why I get Sugar Shake, because it's cheaper. Um, it is potent too, but if you're wondering, that's why. And some people say, grow your own. I'm like, well, I did grow my own. I live in an apartment, comp apartment, a small apartment at that. I'm not going to try and push the limit, because some places will not want you to do that, to grow cannabis plants inside of your home. We can't grow them outside because there's only, I mean, realistically, so I could grow, I mean, if we were allowed to grow wherever we want it, there's a patch of grass out there that could be dedicated to growing cannabis, but in front of my apartment, but dogs are always crapping on it. Not everybody's picking up after their fucking dog, and that really bothers me. It's not the dog's fault. You're allowing the dog to shit on someone's lawn, so that really annoys me. That people don't take responsibility for their pets. I like dogs. Don't get me wrong, but it's a big responsibility, and you need to live up to that responsibility when you decide to own a dog. Or some people don't like to say own, but when you decide to have a dog live with you, you need to pick up their shit. So that really bothers me. So I don't know if that would change if. Cannabis got became so illegal you can grow it outside of your apartment front door. Because uh, with the dogs crapping everywhere, I would not like that. So, <laughs> I'd have to have a little fence around my apartment complex door, <laughs> my unit. Just have a little fence around there. Bob wire fence so the, cat, the dogs can't get in. I don't care about the cat. The cats are cool. You know, cats usually won't take a crap on it on the plants or whatever, or not on the plants, but take a crap in the soil of the plants or whatever. At least that's my experience has been when I used to grow, um, when I was renting a house a long years, long time ago, <laughs> um, where the landlord allowed us to grow cannabis. As long as I had a medical cannabis recommendation hanging up by my plants, I was good to go. Then we had to move from that place because the owner of the place decided, which was the landlord, decided to sell the house. So uh, we had lived in that house for like 12 years, and then we had to move, and it was really, I understand why he wanted to sell it, that house was falling apart, and he got tired of repairing it, but 
that gave us an opportunity, me and my husband, to learn how to grow canvas plants, you know, and see how far we could go with it, how, how much medicine we can grow for ourselves, because I wanted to grow enough for a whole year, and that ended up happening within those four years of growing cannabis as a medical cannabis patient here in California. So, um, I would love to be able to grow again. People saying, grow your own. It's not that easy when you're in a fucking small ass apartment, one bedroom apartment, living with two other people and a cat. And um, people coming and doing inspections all the time. They haven't done any in a while, but they were doing a lot of inspections for a while. Um, so you can't just go in and just... That's the thing is people have this misconception about California. That California is having easy and that um, because cannabis is legal medicinally and recreationally, but only on the state level... They think that uh, we have it easy. Oh, there's lots of jobs out there. You can get a trim job, no problem. You can't get a trim prob job, no problem. Um, it depends on who you are and who you know, once again. And that shit bothers me. You know, I was trying to sign up for this one. Uh, it's called Cali Weeds Jobs. And I sent them an email telling them, I think I talked about this a while ago, but I sent them an email telling them that I was interested in looking for a trimmer job. And um, they have this thing where it's a newsletter where you can be featured in the newsletter. They're like, okay, that's great. We'll feature you. You just have to send us $20 via PayPal or your credit card. And I'm like, why do people have to pay for a job? To pay to get noticed to take be taken seriously. That's how phony this cannabis uh, industry is here. It's pretty phony. Um, just to get a job to trim. It's like, what is this fucking shit? So. It just wants me, it makes me want to just say fuck it. I'm just going to just keep con concentrating on my art and what happens, happens. Because I'm just so tired of all these games. It doesn't need to be games to get a fucking job. Either you want to hire somebody or you don't. Why do you have to pay $20 to get a fucking job? This is stupid. If I had $20 to get a job, do you think I would... Oh my god, you know what I'm saying? <coughs> so, I don't know if I want to put a filter on the end. Yeah, I'll go ahead and do it, see what happens. But yeah, i pretty much tired of dealing with bullshit. Okay, so I'll just use this here. I don't, I'm trying to put a filter in it, but it's not working out. It's probably because I'm not feeling the best. But, uh, we'll see what we can do here. So. So, yeah, that's why I'm not growing canvas for the people that asked. You can check out my old videos and showing you where and when I was growing cannabis. Um, I got a few grow videos up. And, uh, that's all I got. Well, I'm gonna take this out. This ain't gonna work. Let me just adjust this joint to my smoking specifications. I might just smoke both of these joints. What time are we at? Eight minutes? Okay. We'll probably split it up in two parts again, so please watch part one and part two. So, because I want to further give my, um, my viewpoint on gang stalking. So, all right, we got two joints rolled, and I'm going to smoke one. So, let me grab my lighter. It's over here at all. Oh, here we go. Cheers. Thanks for joining me today. Oh, that's good. All right, one more puff is a charm. Three is a charm, right? That's all great. <clears throat> That's all great. The dispensary trim is. I'm not like hacking my lungs out on this one. And my throat feels fine. And by the way, I'm drinking turmeric, cinnamon, and thyme tea today. Um, all of it mixed together by me, not a prepackaged tea bag. So 
Nothing wrong with a prepackaged tea bag, but that's what I got going on. So I wrote down some, uh, I wrote down a little bit of this article that I found on this website called Medium.com. Excuse me. So I'm going to read this to you. I'm just going to give you a basic um, definition of what gang stalking is. All right, gang stalking is an umbrella term describing a series of techniques utilized by a group to instill mental instability within a victim with the intent to discredit, sabotage, harass, extort, and even drive a victim to suicide. A victim of gang stalking can have their reputation, credibility, careers, relationships, and entire life put into ruins. <clears throat> Techniques such as mind games, perception, perception manipulation, organized stalking, covert harassment, constant surveillance, and possibly electronic harassment are used to push a victim to mental instability. So if you want to read the whole article, I'll have the link in the description below, but I'll only put basically what it's all about. In the article, they have uh, uh, stories and stuff of what's happened to certain people. Um, my personal experience with it, the closest I got to gang stalking was when I was five, and I was in kindergarten, and I would go, I'd have to walk to school, and walk to school by myself, and there was a group of uh, boys that would, um, that would follow me, uh, like at least six of them would follow me, and I, I was very scared, and they kept saying really mean things to me and teasing me or whatever. I don't know why they picked on me, but of all people, but they decided to pick on me. Um... Yeah, so after school, um, they would be waiting for me, and I'd find a way to covert, you know, just to, like, you know, try to walk, pretend like I'm walking with somebody else. Like, there was this one, um, this one girl that was in my class, um, and her grandfather would come and pick her up, so I would pretend like I'm walking with them when I really wasn't, and I was too afraid to tell anybody what was going on. Um, I didn't even tell my mom, but I didn't tell my mom because my mom, she wasn't there mentally for me. Um, she was an alcoholic, and she had a lot of mental issues that would make it hard for her to actually stand up for her child, I feel like, at the time. She just, she was just so absorbed with what was going on with her, herself. So, um... That happened, that went on, that harassment went on for quite a while until I finally talked to a teacher, my kindergarten teacher, and I told her what was going on. And she talked to all those boys and put a stop to it. I don't know what she said to them, but they stopped harassing me. They stopped following me. Um, so that was my first experience, what I would equivalent that's similar to gang stalking. Um, now it's probably a lot more sophisticated because we have cell phones and electronics. What do I think of gang stalking? This was the question. I think it sucks. I think it's horrible. I think you should leave people alone and not, I mean, when somebody gang stalks you, that means that they have some insecurities on their own and some shit that they don't want to deal with that they're running away from. So they project all of their anger and fear onto you. So you feel what they feel and you feel vulnerable intimidated and not wanting to maybe leave your house. Um, I did feel really sad when I was a kid. I did feel kind of suicidal when I was a kid and I was only five. I felt like if I was dead, then they wouldn't be able to bother me. And uh, that's not something that a five-year-old or anybody, no matter what age you are, should be thinking. Um, if you are experiencing gang stalking or you suspect that you are, um, tell your friends or family, let people know, be aware of this tell people the people you think that are stalking you give them give your friends and your family a full description of what these people look like that way when you're out and about and some shit happens you'll know that you you're covered your back is covered um maybe take the audio do audio recordings if these people are still following you and saying shit to you record this shit get it up online let people know that you're being harassed um, a lot of times the police um I don't know. I mean, I don't know in this case. I've never tried to contact the police or anything. Of course, when I was five, I didn't. But um, I've never, uh, after that encounter happened, nothing like that's happened to me before. I mean, ever since. So, um, yeah, I've gotten people, like, like li lately, when I've been walking, um, 
I have people, like, whistling out of cars or whatever, but whatever, that's not against the law, and <clears throat> I do, that doesn't really bother me, it's like, whatever. Um, it's when people uh, decide to just stop and just, like, follow you and be all up in your business and intimidate you, make you feel self-conscious about yourself, um, a group of people doing that. So, um, if that is, yeah, like I said, if that is happening to you, tell people about it. Tell people that are close to you about it. Um, let people know what's going on. If it gets to a dangerous level, definitely contact the police, your local police office, your local de police department, I mean, and uh, let them know what's going on. Have, be armed with some evidence, if you can, of any kind, like recordings of any kind, audio recordings, video recordings of these people uh, following you, intimidating you. You don't have to tell them you're videotaping them. That would be the most stupid thing to do. Because they take your phone and just probably um, crush it underneath their boot. You know what I mean? So just make it, keep it like really, you know, low key. Don't let them know that's what's going on and record it. Um, also, a suggestion, what is suggested is that if you're traveling at night, maybe travel with some other one or two more people with you. That way this doesn't happen. You're not likely to be as vulnerable to this happening. Um, that's what I have to say about gang stalking. I don't think it's good. I think it's horrible. Um, if this is happening to you, please take action, be brave and take action and do, try doing some of the things that I just talked about and read that article fully and <clears throat> realize that it's not your fault. These people have some fucking serious problems for them to go, you know, chasing you around you know, and following you, intimidating you. If you allow them to, they will keep doing it as long as they can. So don't allow them that power. Take control of what's going on in your world by asking for assistance, asking for help. Even ask for the assistance of your ancestors. Let them come out and um, let the energy of them come out and be a force field around you so these bitches can't fuck with you. Because this is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Why do we have to deal with someone else's mental problems? That's a mental problem where you think you have to go around and intimidate a group of people intimidating one person. How is that making you a hero or look good? It's not making you look like it. It's making you look like a criminal and a weak-ass person, a weak-ass punk. You know, picking on somebody that can't defend themselves against more than one person. You know, that's fucked up. So, this is going to be part one of this gang stalking video. I'm going to come back to you with a part two. So, thanks for joining me for part one. Thanks for subscribing, liking, and sharing my videos with your friends and family. And thank you for your kind comments. If you like to subscribe to this channel, please feel free to do so. And if you'd like to, um, to support this channel and my other channels, you can feel free to go to my PayPal at kdaddytmama at comcast.net. And appreciation for your donation. I can offer you either a video of your choosing of the topic of your choosing, or I can offer you a piece of handmade artwork. So um, the choice is yours if you donate to this channel um, or my other channels. Uh, someone also asked me what is the link to my Healing with Color channel. I'll get that going on because it's hard to edit when I do things on the phone, so I have to get onto the computer laptop and then I'll edit that but just look up healing with color and you should be able to find it easily I'm sure there's not really anybody else on YouTube that has that name <laughs> who knows maybe they do but I don't think they do so anyway join me for part two and if you can't that's okay do it when you can so brightest blessings to y'all and be safe out there